Thank you, Reynold. It has been an exciting year for Delta. Things are only continuing to accelerate. In the last year, we've gone up to processing two exabytes of data per day. I remember the first time I heard this term. It was just an unfathomable amount of data in grad school that we heard Google was processing. And together with you, we've now scaled Delta to do this twice every single day. Delta is fast. It processes, in some ingestion use cases, more than 40 million events per second. And it's popular. We had over 500 million downloads in the last year. One of the reasons it's so popular is because it's reliable. It's been battle tested by more than 10,000 companies in production. It's open with over 500 contributors adding into the ecosystem. And we're not slowing down. We've got over 80 features that we added in the last year. And I'm going to talk about some of them today. One of the really cool things about Delta is it's the fastest lakehouse format. And this was recently validated by a study done by UC Berkeley and Stanford, and also validated by an independent third party. What you're seeing here is the performance of Delta on TPCDS. And you can see we're faster not only at loading data, but then also querying the data once it's been loaded into a table. One of my favorite parts about the Delta community is Delta RS. For those of you who don't know about it, Delta RS is a complete, from scratch, implementation of the Delta protocol written in Rust native code. And it has exploded in the last year. This is completely driven by the community, and it's really taking off right now. The pretty cool thing about this is because it's in native code, you can use it to link into other ecosystems like Python. And this is, you know, lots of people are starting to use it this way. You no longer need a whole JVM just to query Delta tables. Another unique thing about Delta is Delta sharing. It is the only open protocol for sharing massive amounts of data without being locked into a single vendor's compute platform. The way it works is we actually sign individual Parquet files on demand, so you're still securely sharing your data, but you're always sharing the latest copy, and you don't have to make extra stale copies of it. The ecosystem has been exploding with over 6,000 active consumers and over 300 petabytes being shared per day on Delta sharing. And as with any sharing system, the most important part is the ecosystem. And as you can see, there are lots of people sharing data on Delta. And I'd like to focus on some of the newest that we've just added recently. So Oracle, probably the most prolific relational database ever, now supports Delta sharing. So if you want to do analytics on that data stored in your transactional warehouse, you can do it without creating expensive stale copies. And similarly, Twilio is now unlocking all of the power of their segment customer data platform so that customers can natively query it with any engine that supports Delta sharing. There are a bunch of new features that we've added, including support for structured streaming. As you can imagine, when you have a huge data set, it just doesn't make sense to scan the whole data set over and over and over again. You want an efficient protocol that tells you only what's changed since the last time you read it. And so now it is deeply integrated with structured streaming. We've done tons of improvements on the back end, and so now we've improved query latency by up to 50x. We have full support for OAuth 2, Spark, and Pandas. And then finally, for the CFOs in the audience, there's a pretty exciting development. When you share uh, Delta sharing data on Cloudflare, you can now do that with zero egress fees, which is pretty great if you know how expensive cloud egress fees usually are. Last summit, we announced Delta 2.0, and we haven't slowed down. This year, with Delta 3.0, we have a whole slew of new features. And I want to focus on three of my favorite, the Delta kernel, uniform, and liquid clustering. Let's start with liquid clustering. So liquid clustering is solving the problem of rigid partitioning, which is often required to get good performance, but is very difficult to get correct. Let me start by explaining why it's so difficult to get correct. Even if you pick a pretty reasonable partitioning, partitioning by date and by customer, there's going to be skew in your data. And enforcing that every single file has exactly one distinct set of partition values is a pretty rigid way to do this. And so you can imagine cases where a large customer has way too many files packed into a single partition, and you just can't filter beneath that granularity. In contrast, small customers will be forced to create lots and lots of tiny files, which is both going to blow up your cost and blow up the, your query times when you're querying this data. Liquid clustering breaks this down so that we no longer have to partition at these rigid boundaries. 
Instead, we can look at these smaller data sets and collapse them across this dimension. We can also do it across the other dimension. We can even do it in both dimensions at the same time, picking the optimal file sizes based on the actual data that is present in your table. And it works in both directions. It's not only about combining data, it's also about splitting those whales up so you can filter at a finer granularity. The best part about liquid partitioning is, even though it's less tuning, it's also faster. So when you compare it to Hive-style partitioning, where our benchmark didn't even complete, you can compare it to z-order clustering, which was the old way that Delta did multidimensional data clustering. Liquid partitioning is up to 2.5 times faster. And it's not only queries that are faster, it's the process of ingestion that is faster as well. When you compare it with z-order, there is dramatically less write amplification because we are gradually clustering the data as it's added to the table rather than only in spurts when you run the optimize command. One of the best parts about Delta is its ecosystem, and I want to highlight a couple of the new connectors that we've just added. We now have support for Flink, which I bet you never thought you'd saw at a Spark conference. We have support for Trino and the whole Python ecosystem. But one of the problems is, at the core of this ecosystem is the Delta protocol. And we're continuing to evolve this protocol. And we want to avoid getting into the state that we've seen happen with some other Lakehouse formats, where as they add new features, vendors won't implement the complete spec. And now you're forced to choose between using the latest features or querying your table wherever you want to. And that's why we're really excited to announce the Delta kernel. It's basically going to take this eight different implementations of the protocol spec that exists today and collapse them down into one unified group. We have a JVM ecosystem. We have a native code ecosystem. And it handles the complete Delta spec, both the metadata and the data. So you don't have to worry about deletion vectors or column mapping or whatever else we come up with next in the Delta protocol. You just get your data back from the library. Now, as much work as we do on the ecosystem, there will always be other engines. And we actually think that's great. It turns out that any Lakehouse format is better than a proprietary system. But since we can't control which formats these other engines are going to be able to query, this is a big problem for some of you deciders in the audience. You don't want to pick the wrong format today and then find out tomorrow that IT is forcing you to use some proprietary system that doesn't support Delta. Well, you have to convert all of your data at that point. That's a very scary prospect. But if you squint a little bit, it turns out that's actually probably not necessary. If you look under the covers, all three Lakehouse formats are based on the same fundamental principle, which is an age-old technique in databases, multi-version concurrency control. Basically, all the different systems store Parquet files. When they make changes, rather than update the Parquet file in place, they make a copy of that file. And then the real transactional magic comes from this extra metadata that sits on top and says, for the, this current version of the table, which Parquet file should I read? And since all systems are based on this same underlying principle, we're really excited to announce Delta Uniform. What Delta Uniform does is we have one single set of Parquet files, and then we can create the metadata of any Lakehouse format so you can query your Delta table anywhere in the open Lakehouse ecosystem. So we're going to take this fragmented ecosystem and bring it all into Delta. And you might ask yourself, is it fast? It sounds really expensive to create all of these different you know, copies of the metadata. And it turns out, the, as I said before, the metadata is actually a pretty small part of it. It actually costs less than 5% on your write times to enable extra formats. And what's even more exciting is it turns out Delta is better at writing iceberg tables than iceberg is. When you use Delta to produce an iceberg table, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> because of the advanced clustering I was just talking about, when you use Delta to produce that iceberg table, you have better parquet files, and thus your queries run faster. So this all sounds a little bit too good to be true, and it wouldn't be a Spark Summit if we didn't do a demo. So I'm going to move over to my laptop, and let's see how this works. It's a big stage. OK, so here we are in a Databricks notebook. And you can see a very standard create delta table statement. 
And all I'm adding to it is this one extra table property, delta universal format, enabled formats, and I can just list which other formats we want. We're releasing with full support for Iceberg, and we're working with the community to add support for Hoodie. So I'm going to go ahead and run this command. And then I'm going to switch over to another cloud data warehouse. And as you can see, we've got our table here. And if we look at it, Google BigQuery thinks this is an Iceberg table. So let's go ahead and create a new query on it. Go ahead and add a star here. And I will click Run. And there it is. It's actually a Delta table. Pretty cool. <laughs> I wanted to show at least one other cloud data warehouse, but unfortunately, their open format support is still in private preview, and I couldn't get access. But if you do have access, I encourage you to check this out. And with that, if you'd like to learn more, there's a bunch of other sessions today. You can learn all about the exactly how Uniform is implemented in this session on Iceberg and Hoodie in Delta Lake. You can hear one of my favorite use cases where they, uh, Adobe actually converted from uh, Iceberg to Delta. And you can also learn how to build your own Delta connectors with the Delta kernel. Thank you so much.